Hi, I'm Zivi Owens, and you're listening to Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. This 30-minute podcast features a new author interviewed by me every single day, 365 days a year for about 30 minutes. I am also the publisher for Zibby Books, which publishes 12 books a year in fiction and memoir. Our books are already out now. You can check it out on zibbybooks.com. And we have a magazine called Zibby Mag, where we have lots of wonderful essays and lifestyle features. That's at zibbymag.com. We have classes at zibbyclasses.com. And I recently opened a bookstore in LA called Zibby's Bookshop at 1113 Montana Avenue at 11th Street in Santa Monica. I hope that you are able to enjoy some of our other offerings. But this here podcast is the basis of all of it and started in 2018. And no matter what I do, this is basically my favorite thing. Enjoy. Elizabeth Castellano is the author of Save What's Left, a novel. Elizabeth grew up in a beach town. She lives in New York. Save What's Left is her debut novel, and it was a Good Morning America book club pick. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books to discuss Save What's Left, your debut novel. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Oh my gosh. I was just saying before this started how much I love and am completely obsessed with your book. It's the funniest book I've ever read. It's so smart. It's so great. I read last night all these portions of it out loud to my husband who was like dying laughing with me. And the two of us, we just haven't laughed that hard. It was so great. Congratulations. Amazing. So much. So nice. Thanks. No, I'm serious. First, just tell everybody what the book is about, but then I want to figure out like where you came from. And I, there's like nothing about you anywhere. Like where did you appear from to write this like perfect novel? So anyway. Okay. So the book is really about what happens when we build a fantasy for ourselves and then it bumps up against reality. So for my main character, she finds herself at 60 years old in a position where she has to start fresh, get a new start. And so she decides to move to a beach town and she has this vision for a beach town and beach life that is, you know, built on what she sees in movies and in beach read books. And of course she gets here and she realizes it is anything but what she reads. Her The little house that she builds that she thinks is going to be her dream cottage is really a dilapidated oyster shack. There's a giant construction project with a McMansion going up next door. Everyone in the town is fighting. So it's a small town with all the warts and problems and fighting that is anywhere just with a better view. And so it's basically her getting into escalating absurdity and trying to make this life happy for herself. And she just digs deeper and deeper and gets herself in more and more trouble. Everything she does causes more chaos. (laughs) The move she makes just creates more issues for her. So that's really what it is. It's just kind of escalating problems in this beach town and sort of behind the scenes look at what's going on in a beach town. Wow. Well, wait, first, my first question is how, because I was like, I swear this is the same woman who I met at the luncheon, but like she's writing so well from a position, from the point of view of a slightly older one. There's no way you're 60 years old. Do you know what I mean? Like this woman, Kathleen, is at a completely different point in her life, right? So tell, like, how did you even do this? Like, tell me about the whole thing. Yeah. I just feel like a 60 year old. I think <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Um, I've always sort of been surrounded by older people. I'm they're the youngest in a big family. And so I've always just been around older people. But yeah, I come from this small town and I always thought it was funny. I always thought the people here were funny and I think that's funny in a lot of small towns because you just have to deal with each other. You just have to, you know, it's one of those places where, well, you know, you're you're in it. You have to get along somehow. And that's true, I guess, universally. If you're in a condo, if you're in a city, you, if you're living with anybody, you have to find ways and everybody has sort of arguments. But yeah, I grew up here. I went to a little red schoolhouse that had... Uh, Wait, where is, where is here? On the North Fork of Long Island. Okay. I thought so. Okay. Yeah. So Little Red Schoolhouse, it had, at one point we had nine kids, grades K through six. And so that's, (laughs) you know, we had K through three in one room and four through six in the other. And it was sort of an idyllic childhood, but odd, you know, and when you're in a school with that many kids, you have to be friends with everybody. You know, everyone's going to your birthday party, everyone's friends. So it is that sort of, you have to find a way you know, to be friends and to get along. And even if you're fighting at lunch, you have to make up by the end of the day because this is all you have. You know, these are your friends. 
And so that, I think, plays into it a big part, even in this little community, even though there, there are disagreements in this little fictional town. They, they're they they're there for each other. If there's any issue, if anyone gets hurt, if anyone has any problem, they're always there for each other. So that's how I grew up. I know in the book, you had talked about how this was on the way out to Long Island and how sometimes people just called it West. And so I was trying to figure out, is this West Hampton? Like, is she in Quag? Because I didn't recognize any of the streets or yeah. like communities. And yeah. I was going to Google, like, are these actual places or did you make them up? Are these real places or did you make them up? I made them up. Yep. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like any, I mean, it's sort of meant to be any small beach town. Yeah. 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 And yeah. So the, uh, something a little similar happened to me with a McMansion and I, you know, dipped my toe into sort of town politics and just went to a couple of meetings And I just, once I found out what was going on, I just thought it was so funny. I just thought, you know, this is, and people probably don't know that this is going on, that, you know, there's the side, there's the beach read side where everyone is, you know, this is a beach read really with like no kisses, no sunsets, no. (laughs) People locked in windowless rooms arguing about, you know, where the beach sticker goes. Should it go on the front bumper or the rear bumper? You know, that's, that's the other side of beach life is all these conversations. So do you still live in the North? Do you still live in the same town? No, I'm here. I'm here for now, but, you know, looking to make a move after the book tour and everything. But while I'm doing this, I thought it'd be good to be here. Awesome. Can you explain your life to me? So you grew up (laughs) in the Little Red Schoolhouse. And then then what happened? And so then I went to the bigger school, which had about 80 kids in a grade. And I went to Bates College in Maine. Uh, I studied theater and I wanted to work in television. I thought, I just want to work at NBC and I want to work at 30 Rock and be like Liz Lemon. And (laughs) I just thought that'd be great. And I'll get to go into that building and they just wouldn't have me. And so, so I started writing. I've always sort of been writing. And then the story sort of fell into my lap that I just thought this is probably something that hasn't been done and, and hasn't been looked at. And it's just, I thought it was just a funny funny idea to show the other side of beach town life. So that's really, you know, that's. So you just wrote it. You just like sat down like, and just wrote the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, I wrote other things before that didn't go. And this was the idea that I was like, this is probably correct. This is probably the idea. So yeah, that's that's what I've been doing for the last, you know, couple of years is working on this. Wow. Wait, so, because I love hearing stories of like, this was rejected and then I tried this and then this. So like, give me one of those inspiring stories. Like, did you write an entire other novel or what happened? I wrote an entire novel about a 22-year-old who couldn't find a job. (laughs) (laughs) Very on topic. And, (laughs) and, uh, And so that a lot of people were a little interested, but you know, I guess nobody really wants to hear about a 22 year old that can't get a job, which I understand now. It was <laughs> fascinating to me at the time. And wrote a couple of other things. I tried writing a little middle grade because I love children's literature. And so then I wrote this and my main agent, my top pick for an agent got back to me and she called me and said, you know, gave me some direction and said, okay, this is, this is what's working. And this is my idea. And it was really, that was all the difference was like this 20 minute phone call with this agent that was willing to just speak to me and say, you know, here's, here's an idea and here's where, you know, here's where you're going wrong. Here's where you need to go. And that was like, you know, changed everything really for me. And so then I went back, I changed it. I edited it. It was always about the beach town. It was always this character and it was always save what's left, but it needed, you know, parts taken out and things. And so, and so then she became my agent and we sold it. And it was just really, you know, when you hear nothing back, it's so hard Mm -hmm. when agents don't write back or tell you anything. And so I didn't know anybody in publishing or I've never been to a writer's conference. Well, I went to one, I went when I was 16, I went to Alice Hoffman has a little writing program at Adelphi. And I went to that when I was 16 years old and met her and I just thought she was great. (laughs) That was like a big moment for me that I was, you know, to meet a real author and somebody that yeah. I admired so much. Yeah. So that was the big thing was, was having somebody say, okay, here's, here's what's going on. And that, that really changed everything. I actually just had lunch with Suzanne Gluck. Is that who you were talking about? Because I read that in your acknowledgments because um, I went to a lunch for Jean Kwok, who wrote The Leftover Woman Now is coming out. And I love Jean and 
I don't know. We've been new friends for a couple of years. Anyway, so they had a, a, like a, a little luncheon for her and I got to know her and she's so nice. Yeah. Well, I heard her uh, speak. I haven't met her, but I've heard her speak. She has some fascinating story. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but I meant Suzanne was also oh, really Suzanne. nice. Yeah. I mean, she was funny and funny too. I can totally, you know, so. Suzanne is great. <laughs> she is like the dream, dream agent. I can't believe she's my agent. It's so cool. It's so awesome. Funny. So yeah. So we bond over um, Beach Town. Beach town life. Yeah. Can I just read a couple of parts that I thought were so funny? I kept like texting myself as I read. Wait, let's see if I can find them fast enough. Let's see. You said, uh, oh, this, this one killed me. You were like, things like this happen to me. I think I have one of those trustworthy faces that says, I'll listen to anything, which is true. I will. One time, Tom and I were waiting for the Crosstown bus on East 79th Street when a woman with a cast on her arm walked over to me and asked if I could please sip her fly. Tom was horrified when I kneeled down without hesitation. Oh, oh my God, you're so sure, sure. That is That happened. Did it? <laughs> That, that happened. And I was just like, sure. <laughs> Woman with a cast on her arm. She had all these bent. She said, um, I am so sorry. Can you please help me? And I was like, absolutely. And so this is, I constantly get this. I am the person that people go to for tell anything. Like someone sits down, I get their whole life story. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah, so that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I also love this one. You said, I could have had an exciting life, but I blew it. I had a boyfriend in college who was smart and funny and could tell a story and he liked me. The only problem was that sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes he'd tell me things like he was having thoughts about electrocuting me in the bathtub or pushing me off terrain platforms. He assured me that he did not want to do these things, just that he was thinking about them a lot. <laughs> oh my God, so funny. Happened to me, but that that happened thing. to you. No, that didn't happen to oh, me. Okay, but that is the thing with OCD. It's just these intrusive thoughts, and that you know, that's people don't even know that that it's just like they're the most harmless people. It's just intrusive thoughts. But I did. Tom, the husband in the story, <laughs> leaves Kathleen, the main character, and says he's had a paradigm shift. And yes, which was okay. also so funny. And so that's my first boyfriend. That's how he broke up with me. Was oh my gosh. Me that he had a paradigm. I was 16. And he said, I've had a paradigm shift. <laughs> I, was like, oh. I was like, I see. And then I went with my friends and was like, what is a paradigm shift? Because he's had one. So <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it doesn't sound good for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. And honestly, the the section with the Albania comment, I was, I was dying. I was just dying, laughing so hard. All of it. I mean, all of it's so funny. Ending is so perfect. The whole thing was like the perfect package, start to finish. I couldn't believe how, I just couldn't. I was so excited. You just, it was just so excited. Anyway. So nice things. Yeah, it's wild. It's, uh, it was a wild story. And these, these towns, I think everybody has that sort of universal thing of having a frustration or seeing a problem and thinking, well, I can change this. I can do something about this. This same seems like a solvable problem. And then yes. you realize I can't change it. And you think you have power and yeah. you find out you're powerless. And that can go for really any problem. It's just Kathleen, my character, just doesn't know when to stop. No. She keeps it up. You know, she, <laughs> she just keeps going and digging herself. To the point that, you know, she lands in the hospital being poisoned by a septic tank. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to laugh. Really great. Anyway, it's just so funny. It's just so funny. So are you working on a new book? I hope you are because I have to read now everything you write. I'm working on a new book. It's early stages, work in progress. I'm going to do a younger character, which I'm finding more difficult, which is... <laughs> ridiculous. So right now, I'm not sure. It's got like an Ireland element right now, but could change. So yeah, something don't really have, have much to divulge at the moment, but okay. I'm working on, yeah. I'm delighted. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I mean, the point of view, I know I already mentioned this, but this sort of sadness over what Kathleen has not been able to live or even how she like ended up in Kansas city for so long life, this notion that like life is passing us all by, like we don't necessarily have the grand plan. Things just happen and you fall into these situations. And sometimes it just takes like the biggest thing to be able to regroup. And then what do you do when that happens? I, I feel like, I don't know, it's just so, it's so relatable, but also inspiring that you can just like, you know, yeah. perhaps you shouldn't buy a house. I don't see, but I totally understand that too. So it, it works out, works out in the end. And yeah, uh, 
yeah, and she has sort of a new chapter and yeah. sees things more clearly. Yeah, I mean, Kansas City, I've, I never really met anyone from Kansas or Kansas City, and now I meet them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm from Kansas, but that was sort of my, I was like, I couldn't get a job in New York, went everywhere. I just was like, I, I mean, I applied to everything. I applied to like give tours of cemeteries. I was a film extra for a while. I still, I still get texts that are like, <laughs> you have like a zombie outfit and can you do this? At 3 a.m. in this, you know, <laughs> abandoned factory. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still on that chain. So I did a little of everything. And I always thought like, well, you know what? I kept threatening everybody, really. I'm going to move to Kansas City and I'm going to go work at Hallmark. And, I'm, you know, okay at design. And I'm probably not good enough to do the A holidays. But yeah, I loved you had that in the book, the B holidays. <laughs> I could probably get a job doing the B holidays that like nobody really sends cards for. And uh, so I thought like, that's what I'm going to do. And then it was really me imagining like, what would I be like in 30 years if I did that? If I, if I did move to Kansas City and just didn't pursue, you know, what I wanted to pursue and just went with the, the safer option. Not that Hallmark would have me. I'm sure they would have also said, no, thank you. But <laughs> so that was it. It was that me sort of imagining what what would it be like to just say like put everything on hold and and could you just would it just continue would you just stay there and so that's sort of what happens to my character she she stays and then she sort of wakes up one day and her husband is you know having a paradigm shift and he's leaving on a world cruise on the queen mary and and so she's like okay well what do i want and and of course, the beach towns are sold as just magic. You know, you'll move to a beach town and you're going to meet a handsome man and you'll have friends and you're going to entertain. And she doesn't expect to be locked in you know, zoning board meetings. <laughs> even even when she goes off on this whole thing about the private beach and how like, <laughs> guess what? There are no private beaches. It's just a beach. There are lots of people there. <laughs> like, <laughs> or these people with the private beaches, they don't yeah. exist. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just no. so many. Oh my gosh. Your observational humor though. I mean, it doesn't have to be about beach towns. You're obviously just like hilarious. So are you writing now? Like I want more, or do you do essays or short stories or like, are you going to start contributing more like shorter form as you write another novel? I never really thought I could write a novel. I never thought you know, I, I did like a little column when I was in high school. It was sort of a humor column, 500 words. And I was like, I'm going to max out at 500 words. That's all I could do. And yeah, so I like to do shorter things. I think this, I, I'm more like an essay person. So I was, but yeah. the novel seemed like the right way to do this story. Yeah. So and uh, what about translating this to film? Is that in the works? It's not in the works yet. I guess there's feelers out. I'd love that because that was my whole, uh, I just, I love, I love any kind of like form of storytelling, really. I love film. I love TV. I love books. You know, I always say that I probably got a lot of humor from like I, when I was a little, like very little kid, I couldn't sleep well and I hated being alone at night. I just like hated it. And so eventually my mom was like, all right, we're going to put the TV in your room. So that's probably, you know, I invented screen time problems. I guess. <laughs> In the nineties, I was, I had my, you know, VHSs of Disney movies. And then when I was like eight or nine, I had all these DVD sets of sitcoms just everybody loves Raymond and Seinfeld and all of these and I would just fall asleep to these every night and just for years and years and so I'm like that probably just like osmosis had this like sitcom quality to me and just got everybody loves Raymond constantly <laughs> <laughs> like just sleeping through that so that probably caused brain damage but so yeah I was I'm always been a big fan of tv and film what are the launch plans for the book so we're doing a lot of, I mean, it's great because it got a lot of beach town events. So that's okay. fun. Yeah. Awesome. So we're doing something in Cape Cod and the Jersey Shore, we'll be in the Hamptons. So amazing. So the when, are you gonna, when are you going to be in the Hamptons? Do you know? I'll, I can check your schedule. Uh, somewhere. July, I want to say the 14th. Oh, good. Something okay. like that. Like the, I have to look. Hold All right. On. Well, we'll we'll connect on it later. So fun. And now, of course, you'll come to LA and do an event. <laughs> yeah, so cool. yeah. I've never been to LA. I've been to San Francisco. Oh, it's yeah. Fun. Yeah. 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 I'd love to go. It's sort of like the ultimate beach town. Like the whole thing is like one big right, people right. move out there for like the same reason, except it's like an enormous city. So the July 7th. July 7th. Okay. Doesn't work for me, but that's okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> when you read, what are some of your, who are some of your favorite authors? Do you like to read humor? Like what's your go-to? I do like to read humor. I love Nora Ephron. I always loved reading her essays. Yeah. Um, I like Salinger. I love memoirs. I love, I guess that's because I always write in first person too. So I love that kind of thing. Real guilty pleasure for reading like musicians' memoirs. Like, oh. <laughs> love doing that. So yeah, I'm reading, what did I read now? Read Trust. Uh-huh. Thought that was great. And now I'm reading The Plot. But yep. I, yep. And so I'm I'm kind of all over the place. Um, I like to read humor. I like uh, Calvin Trillin, I think is so funny. He has a book, Tepper Isn't Going Out. That's from like the 90s. It's about a yeah. guy in, yep, in New York who just sits in his car and won't leave the parking space. <laughs> <laughs> That's like right up my alley. You know, somebody with a very small problem that creates. And so he becomes like a folk hero. So I love those books that are like little moments and a character just falling, you know, man in a hole, like gets into a situation and how do they get out of it? So I'm a real sucker for that. Did you watch, did you watch in the eighties, the movie called the money pit? No, I don't think so. Oh my God. You have to go watch it. I I mean, they must be streaming somewhere. I don't even know what happens to movies anymore, but it was with Sally Field and Tom Hanks, I think. Not Sally Field. Shelley Long. Okay. Remember Shelley Long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm older than you, but anyway, she was in Cheers back in the day and they buy this house that they think is beautiful and decide to fix it up and it like destroys, everything goes wrong. And yeah. it's a lot of like situational comedy, but like, you know, it's so funny. I should watch it again now that I've actually like renovated a house as a grown up. but you know, they like walk through and sort of like fall through and Tom Hanks is at one point stuck in his like oriental rug, like hanging <laughs> down from the floor below. But it's, it's, uh, I think you'd like it, but yeah. Random. It's like Funny Farms and other... Really. Yeah, yeah, Funny Farm, yeah. Do you read Irma Bombach ever? She's really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so funny. More, more about parenting and sort of housework stuff. But, yep. um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so I read a little, little bit of everything. Have you reconnected now with Alice Hoffman since you... I haven't, I haven't. I have her. She signed a book for me. Good luck with your writing. It meant like so much to me. Oh my gosh, I email with... I'm gonna, I can put you in touch if you want. That would be great. That you want so- to? Okay. I'll put you in touch. Yeah, so great. So that was that was fun. I, it was a, mostly like poetry driven that little thing. And, you know, I'm not a poet. And so we were sitting around and we had to like be in a circle and like, okay, just like, let's write a quick poem in 15 minutes. And so I wrote a poem about like a sailboat, you know, something, <laughs> <laughs> something very like, you know, and everybody else got up and like dug up trauma, you know, it was like, and this and... I, you know, drugs and this and, and like, so, and so I was like furiously, you know, trying to like add like a sinking of the sailboat or some <laughs> drowning to, to keep, I was like, okay, I can't compete with this. I wrote a poem about a sailboat. It's not working. Oh so my gosh. yeah. So that was that experience, but it was great. It was so fun. It was so great to meet Alice. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Do you have any advice for aspiring authors? Uh, do I have any advice? I think probably, I mean, this is like the constant advice, but to write in your own voice and not follow the trends. I did that for a while trying to figure out like, oh, well, what, what will people want? And what, what, you know, does the publishing industry want? And it turned out, you know, what my perspective was the thing that worked and the thing that I thought was funny. And so it really was sticking to my view. And so I think that's important to find your perspective and what you can bring that's different than what other people can bring. So I think that's that's one thing that's kind of been said before. But I'm trying to think what else. That was good. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's the that's kind of uh that's the big the big thing is to just kind of trust what you think is good or interesting. And that 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 really will work more Amazing. than just going with, oh, well, this person wrote this and that works. So I thought this was funny. I thought that someone else will think it's funny. And that that's eventually what worked. I wish I came to that conclusion earlier, but but maybe this had to happen. You know, maybe it, I had to wait. I think I also had to get older. You know, yeah. my voice has kind of been the same since I've been in high school, the same, same kind of writing voice. But I think I just had to get a little more mature perspective. Yeah. And sometimes that, it's just time. It's just the way you see things. Also, you just need to have some life experiences to go off of. Well, bravo to you. Save what's left. So great, so funny. I'm such a huge fan. Anyway, oh, thank you. So much. Thank you. <laughs> podcast, yeah. Thanks so much, and I'll follow up about the other stuff on email. All right, great. Thanks. Okay. So much. It'd be so good to see you. All right, bye.
Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zibby Owens and at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Also sign up for my newsletter at ZibbyOwens.com and sign up for my virtual book club and meet lots of authors on Zoom every other week. Thanks so much to Steve and Ryan at Texture Sound for the sound editing. And thank you to Morning Moon Productions for providing this fantastic intro and outro music. 